What's up, Facebook? Sue Schwab Eats. I'm here with the wonderful Jody, owner of Tapped Truck. If you have not seen this beautiful machine on Instagram, you're going to. This is going to be an amazingly popular <laughs> business here coming in the next summer. Lots of parties, lots of beer parties, to pour. Parties, anniversaries, so, weddings, outdoor festivals, you name it, we're there. So what? where have you gone this year? Um, so this year we serviced primarily the shoe shop region. So right. we did events in Kamloops, uh, Blind Bay, Salmon Arm, Vernon. Right. Okay. Now I want to take you right back to the beginning. Sure. The idea of this. Yes. Why? Why Why did you make a beer truck? As magnificent as this thing is, <laughs> yes. why a beer truck? So um, I was wasting time on Facebook, as we tend to do, and something yes. came up on my feed about a champagne truck. And initially, I was just like, well, that's ludicrous. Who needs to drink that much champagne ever? You have one <laughs> glass and you're done. You have not been to the rich places, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> um, my taste is not for champagne, clearly, and I just kind of started thinking like, but a beer truck would be kind of cool. Like I could see how that would be neat. And one thing led to another and it just kind of took me down this rabbit hole that I didn't return from. You just kept going down. You're like, I'm this far? <laughs> but you gotta keep going. You got it. That's awesome. Now, in the back, now we're not gonna talk about it because the last time I tra tried to transport a keg, it went horrible. Yes. It was for my wedding. It was not cold enough. Yes. I tried to put it in an ice bath to cool it down overnight. It totally. did not work. It's still frothed in the morning. It was garbage. Yes. How much time and research, how many questions did you have to ask to figure that out? Yeah, I feel like every time I thought I was done asking questions, like I just pushed myself to ask two more. Like that was the rule I had in research. Um, and we feel your pain. Like that was a big part of the beer truck technology that we worked to develop was just we've had keggers before yeah. where you're trying to find a beer can that's big enough to or sorry a garbage can that's big enough to put the keg in you're hand pumping yep. foam everywhere yeah like a frat party 100 percent. and um, we're like you know i mean me and my husband were in our 30s now like we shouldn't have to drink bad beer. <laughs> um, i'm sophisticated <laughs> i'm sophisticated enough to drink good beer and so we set out to solve that problem we did a ton of research we met with everything from um, restaurant owners to find out how to pour beer, what mistakes they learn, um, to other similar models um, in other countries, just to talk to them about what they learn in their process. Don't get me wrong, as much research as we did, there was still a lot of really messy mistakes we made along the way. A lot of unknown um, unknowns. 100%. Um, being the first of our kind in Canada, like, it's very difficult, mm -hmm. I think, to, like, do all of your homework um, because we didn't know necessarily what questions to ask all the time. And so a lot of it was learning as we go. And like I said, just every time you think you've asked every question you can think of, there's always more. Just ask two more. Yes, and I believe that. How much of your answers came from restaurant tours versus just searching for it on Google? Oh no, like um, Google only gets you so far. Like I just believe you don't get an opportunity to understand the nuances um, and to ask that extra question or to get that extra information outside of the question you're asking. Like Google answers the question you're asking, mm -hmm. but if you don't know the two or three questions you need to follow up with, you're stuck in that box. Whereas when you're dealing with an actual human, chances are they're going to lead you to question two or three. Yeah, they're going to remember a little bit of something, a little bit of something, and just totally. lead you down further that rabbit hole. <laughs> 100%. And we couldn't have done it without actual interviews with humans. That's cool. Now. In my experience, talking to another person, they're more than gladly to give up a lot of information as long as you talk about them and what they like. Now, a lot of people were actually willing to actually help you out. Yeah, just, I would say 100%. Like when we shared with them broadly what our idea was, like they yep. were just like, oh, we would love to have one of those in our community. And so that certainly helped us. Um, I think sharing the vision and like our passion, like my passion, like I've never poured a beer in my life. I've never worked in a restaurant in my life. Like, it's this amazing. Was for me. My passion really comes down to solving a business problem. And I saw that there's a problem with how we enjoy beer. Like at public events, why are we drinking the red can? Oh, yeah. Yeah. At those yeah. guys. Yeah. At local events, we have so much cool local craft We products. do. We have Mount Bagby. We have <laughs> all sorts of great craft beers around and here. And so it seemed a shame. And so I was just like, this is a business problem that seems perfectly solvable. And so that's, that's where my passion came from. Um, the pouring and everything is fun, but we love 
me and my husband, like we love craft. It was beer. the business, it was the beer, and you that's just that, that's amazing. Incredible. Now you got into the entrepreneur. Yes. Now how much do you think that program has helped you jumpstart it? And do you suggest other people do it? Fully. One percent. So um, A like I went into entrepreneur without an idea. So with, like with no idea. With no idea. I really? Just, like I'm We've only been in the community for two years. Okay. So I just saw it as an opportunity to network and meet like-minded entrepreneurial yeah. spirit. Um, when this idea kind of came to me within the first months of launch, I was like, okay, I think I can run with this through this program. Um, it's business boot camp. So not only are you making amazing humans, like they're really walking you through how to develop a solid business strategy and plan that, yeah, will move you forward, but will also help you with things like funding, bank loans, like all of the Understanding things. Understanding more of the traditional business way things are done, sort of? 100%, yeah. Yeah, because that's a lot of things where a lot of people like, they have a great business idea, they want to go for it, but there's so many things that just people don't know about the traditional business that they really need to, otherwise it's right on your face. 100%. And it's a terrible thing. Yeah, and then like to have the opportunity to pitch the business in front of the entire theater, so 300 people from our community. How, plus a how did you session. feel in there? Was that like butterflies? Oh, it's the hardest thing I've ever done, 100%. Like, it's one thing to go up and speak. Like, I come from a sales background, so going up and speaking in front of a boardroom is one thing. Um, and doing it, like, I can do that, that's fine. But when you're talking about something that's near and dear to your heart, like, building a business becomes integral to the fabric of your being. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's a baby. To it. It's a baby. And so, you know, pitching to be the best in the community and to be judged by your peers, like, it's scary. It's And I give kudos to everyone who has the balls to do it because it yeah. takes incredible courage. Um, I can say after that, the very first event we did um, was because of Launchpreneurs. So Shadow and Medi Spa and Salmon Arm reached out to us for their customer appreciation event solely mm -hmm. because they saw us at launch. That's cool. Um, and we've since had like wedding inquiries and things like that. And we always ask, how did you hear about us? And I always say we still get two or three every month or two. We saw you at launch. That's so amazing. Yeah. That's so cool. Now you always have a fantastic truck. It's a Ford two. What is it? Two fifty. It's a Ford, yeah, camper special. So she's an F two fifty with an eight foot block. So an eight foot block. That's that yeah. sounds rare. It, it is very rare. Um, <laughs> we were very lucky when we came across her um, because the box was like a. She's a three quarter ton, so she mm -hmm. has the pull. Um, to, up, to get up and weight. go and yep and the box is definitely the right size for us to do up to six kegs at a time six kegs now do you you obviously have six tap now do you do six different flavors only we can do whatever you like so we can do beer we can do fire we can do wine we can do cocktails on tap we can do soda we Hang can on. do kombucha cocktails on tap yes that is amazing. Yeah, so we have a supplier um, that we use. So we can do smoked Coke with either rum or Jack. Um, we do Moscow Mule, so it's a ginger beer with vodka <laughs> and gin. And then we do, um, it's a gin with rosé crush um, for, sorry, it's a tonic with rosé crush for gin and tonic. That is, that is mind blowing, yeah. honestly. <laughs> I, I, I thought it was just gonna be beer, but no, you just expanded my horizons. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're kind of like a one-stop shop you know like I don't think people realize the possibility of what you can actually serve on tap we're also happy to pop cans and pour wine for you yep. for sure we understand like a keg is a big commitment right um, so we're able to supplement our bar service that way um, but it is kind of remarkable what we can put on the truck <laughs> definitely is <laughs> so how does your business actually work so the, the business owner gets the, the license Yep. And then you just come and pour. Exactly. So we're a mobile bartending service. So the host, that's how we refer to who hires us. Yeah. Um, the host holds permit or already has a license. Like we've done golf course tournaments where we do whole sponsorship and pour beer at one of the holes. Um, in that case, like a permit isn't required. They already have a liquor license as long as we're where they're allowed to serve liquor. Um, we don't buy or sell the beer. So again, for like local businesses, like um, when we work with a golf course or a hotel, okay. um, they still get the opportunity to sell their beer. It's just, we're giving them a vehicle, literally, um, from which to dispense the beer. That is so cool. That's so cool. But back to your passion about beer. <laughs> yes. Why do you have a passion about beer? Um, you know, I think more than anything, it's this idea that beer joint, like, you sit down and have a beer. You talk about Miller time. 
like there's something fun community about it for sure i also love that um it really has encouraged um an entire new generation of makers entrepreneurs like to get together and do something i hate like the big beers they're boring the tasteless they're just like they taste like tin <laughs> not all of them <laughs> they're just, and, and so like what better way to bring um money back in your community than by supporting local oh, and that's, the fact that we have so much option with local beer you know what amazes me is how many wineries around here yes and that like <laughs> get, get, wait and can, you, can yeah. we dispense wine we can, yeah. So um, <laughs> there is some wine that comes in kegs, and we're able there to. There is. It. Yeah. Is it better than box wine? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have your options, so I guess it depends which wine you choose. All right. <laughs> so your one of your favorite beers is Nasty Habit by Mountain Begby. Yeah. Why? Um, you know, it's a very approachable IPA, so I really like IPAs. I feel IPA can be kind of scary for someone who's new to craft. Uh, from someone who has no idea what an IPA is, okay. what is an IPA? <laughs> so it's an Indian pale ale. Um, and when we're talking to, uh, I would say, a consumer who is used to the big box beers, um, oftentimes they're afraid of an Indian pale ale because the IBU, so that's the bitterness unit in the beer, is very high. So oh. it has that hoppy flavor yeah. that sometimes a, beer a non-craft beer drinker shies away from. In very plain language. Mm. So um, we love the nasty habit. I mean, it's called the nasty habit for um, a reason. <laughs> for just, a reason. We love the name. Um, we love Mount Big B Brewery. We find a lot of they have great flavor profiles, a great diversity in flavor profiles. We very frequently serve the Mount Big B Kolsch um, in the summertime because big box drinkers find it very approachable, <laughs> um, and they can still say that they're having a craft beer. And it's not scary. It's a very light, easy summer drinking beer. That's really cool. I find well, IPs are perfect for the um, transition into fall. Because as we go into winter, we're going to go into probably more of the, um, like a Cranog back end of gods, like the heavier stouts and browns. It is a heavy beer. Yes. But it is a good IPA beer. The IPA is a good seasonal transistor. Like okay. it's getting you from. So what do you prefer in the summertime then? Because I'm, because for, for me, yeah. I like beer, okay. but I'm not like a connoisseur of beer. Like I'll drink this at this time of season and this at this time of uh, season, that with that meal and <laughs> that with fish and sure. like I. <laughs> it's just beer. If it's exactly, wet, it's, cold, it's, it's beer. Good. <laughs> it's awesome. So, what about beer that makes it specifically for season for you? Um, I think it's just the weight of it. Like in summertime, you're out in your bikini, okay, and so you want a lighter beer, an easier drinking beer. Um, as you move into fall, like you might still have a couple beers, like watching football or hockey, but it's probably a little slower, a little chill. It's a little chilly outside. Mm -hmm. And then as you get into winter, like there's something about like a nutty chestnut brown. Like we love the Whistler chestnut ale. Um, that is a good transition beer as well. We love Cranog's backhand of God in the winter time. Like it's um, an Irish stout. Like these beautiful heavy beers just kind of lend themselves, I think, to the season. That's really cool. Well, it's 11 in the morning, and you have self-respect, <laughs> so you're not going to drink that or even try it. But as host, <laughs> I'm going to force myself to do so. He's going to force himself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Lucky I have a cameraman here. He's going to drive home. Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> that is a refreshing beer. Yeah. That was a super good beer. <laughs> Anything you want to say to the people? No. Um, Anything you want to ask the shoe swappians? I guess just, you know, when you're ready to get tapped in the shoe or tapped in the OKB, we hope you'll give us a call. You can find us at on all the socials at the Tapped Truck um, or at the tappedtruck.com. The tapped truck .com. That's amazing. I can't wait to see you in the shoe swap and come by and <laughs> slam some beers with you. Awesome. I'll get the rugby club together. Okay. We'll come by. <laughs> And we'll do a boat race. Okay. That'll be fun. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Cheers. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Likewise. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Your attention means the world to me. Please, please, please share this. Pass it on. And tell your friends it's the best podcast in the Shushua. <laughs> Let me know what you thought. Have a good day. <laughs>